marks. This is a name which creates intense emotions, from love to violence to hate to entire revolutions. He has had an impact on the lives of each of us. Some Poles have often referred to him as the most influential thinker of the millennium. And for our exam, he started a whole new perspective in sociology called Marxism, which we will soon see. What we will learn is a few concepts of Marx, how he saw the world, and how he can help us clear the exam. He is very quotable and the quotes we provide can be memorized for the exam. You can read Marx from Ritzer or Alambos or join the course where we provide all the materials and references under one roof. Before we start Marx, in the introduction video, we will see his social world. We will see the events and the people who influenced Marx and made him into what he became. The central question of Marx. Marx's write writings are very broad, ranging from philosophic concerns about human nature, epistemology, which we saw in our previous videos, consciousness, and even in social sciences, with works on politics and capitalism. But specifically, Marx was concerned with the unanticipated effects of capitalism. Now we know most countries of the world follow capitalism, India too after the 1991 reforms. And capitalism was to be an important mechanism through which social equality was to be. There have been successes and millions have been lifted out of poverty, but it has also produced high levels of inequality and abuse. Marx wanted to understand how these undesirable effects came and wanted to explain how history can move from capitalism to a more humanistic economic system. Marx argues that there are certain structural factors which creates tension in capitalism. Most importantly, they are exploitation and overproduction. These tensions create cycles of economic recession which repeat again and again. These cycles create a small class of wealthy capitalists and a large class of dependent and deprived workers. Each economic crisis is deeper than the previous one and it again concentrates wealth and power in fewer and fewer hands with the working class experiencing greater levels of economic, physical and psychological suffering. In the long run, these cycles will cause capitalism to destroy itself and that will bring economic and social change. Marx was born in Germany on May 5, 1818, to a Jewish family. Though his father had converted to Christianity to escape the oppression of Jews, so Marx had a secular education. His father was a lawyer and a reader of philosophers such as Kant and Leibniz. We will see some of the philosophies very soon. Marx's family lived next to a Prussian government official. Germany was a collection of many states called Prussia then. It was broken up. Uh, so the name of the official was Westphalen and his neighbor and later Marx married his daughter. The most important effect which his neighbor Westphalen had on Marx was that he introduced Marx to the ideas of Henry de Saint-Simon which we saw in our previous videos, you know, how he influenced Comte to start sociology. Marx's work is kind of what is called as economic determinism, which is that he gives central place to the economy, not the culture as Durkheim did, but the economy. Marx continued his education in the University of Bonn and then Berlin in Germany and completed his PhD in philosophy at the University in Jena. In Berlin, he came in contact with the ideas of Hegel and the new Hegelians. They are a group of people who followed Hegel, his disciples. And we will uh, learn more about Hegel very soon. Marx sought academic employment, but he didn't find any. So 
he was destined to be unemployed. He then began to work for a radical newspaper and very quickly became its editor. Some of his articles gained attention from the political elite and were censored on a regular basis. One of the articles about the Russian emperor, uh, you know, the, after that the Prussian government shut down his paper. He then moved to Paris. In Paris, Marx came to know about a person who will become his very close friend and collaborator, Frederick Eng Engels. Engels was the son of a wealthy German businessman and was very important in Marx's life. It was through Engels Marx learned about the abuses of industrial capitalism, about child labor and the poor working class. As an industrialist, Engels knew the economic system from inside out. Engels sent Marx various articles about the deplorable conditions of the working class, which Engels published as his first book in 1844, called The Conditions of the Working Class in England. Engels also provided a lot of financial support to Marx as Engels was rich, especially when Marx was in London. Both shared an interest in Hegel and association with young Hegelians. Both worked for 40 years to co-author the Communist Manifesto, you know, the most famous book of which most people have heard in 1847. After Marx's death, Engels finished the last two volumes of Das Kapital, the magnum opus of Marx, a critique of political economy, a huge work analyzing the historical development and politic political and economic roots of capitalism. Engels was also a good writer in his own regard. We will see in our chapter when we do family in paper one, his work called The Origin of Family, Private Property and the State, where he analyzes the monogamous marriage, you know, that is marrying to only one person. You know, it, uh, according to him, it's a very modern trend and it came about to keep wealth to a man's children and no one else. Engels saw it as the beginning of class oppression. This unequal control of wealth was the embryo form of oppression which later developed into a wide scale within society and state. He didn't marry his lifelong partner, Mary Burns, because he believed in what he said. So coming back to our story of Marx, Marx was uh, in Paris where he met Frederick Engels and soon after uh, some time he was uh, kicked out of Paris. He was banned by the French Prime Minister in 1847 after he spent after that he spent a few years in Brussels where he became associated with the communist league who wanted Marx and Engels to write the Communist Manifesto in 1847 and uh, it, the publication of the Manifesto in 1848 coincided with a wave of revolutions which swept across the world during that time and uh, in Europe and the world. Uh, and the, but Britain and United States, they were not affected by this revolution. There were several causes for the revolution in Europe which was that the Europe had suffered through a lot of famines before. The Industrial Revolution create, created both prosperity and misery. And there were a number of ideological beliefs such as democracy, democracy, nationalism, liberalism, socialism that had gained wide, widespread uh, audience through the press which also had started during the Industrial Revolution because of the uh, printing press. So Marx was very happy. He was literally seeing what he was writing. Then Marx returned to Germany again uh, as an editor of a radical paper and tried to create change. However, it was not to be. The revolutions were put down within a year and uh, hardly any reforms came. Marx and Engels were uh, sent to exile in London. I mean they themselves went because they were kicked out of Paris. They went to London and they thought that this uh, revolution will start again, but it did not. So Marx worked in London 
for the next 13 years where he kept researching in the British Museum from morning 11 a.m. to the evening 7 p.m. And most of that work became the basis for Das Capital. Mark soon had one more uh, shot at a revolution. In 1863, some labor leaders from France came to London to discuss the possibility of forming an international working workers association. And it was formed, it was called as the International Working Men's Association, also known as the First International. And Marx took control over it as soon as it was formed. And he thought that the same energy of the 1848 revolutions will come again. But uh, it did for a short amount of time. Uh, there was an event in world history when Prussia defeated France in the Franco-Prussian Wars, which you'll see in our world history videos. And the working class in Paris took control of France after the defeat. And it formed the Paris Commune, the first government held by and for the working class. The new government only lasted a few months and a lot of people were slaughtered. And this was the last attempt Marx had. And to uh, pre preserve the first international, Marx moved its headquarters to the United States. But it soon disbanded in 1876. And Marx never recovered. And uh, for the rest of, uh, rest of his life, especially after the death of his wife and his daughters, he spent in uh, sickness and solitude. Uh, at his graveyard, the Ingalls said, on the 14th of March, Quarter to three in the afternoon, the greatest living thinker ceased to think. He had been left alone for scarcely two minutes, and when we came back, we found him in his armchair, peacefully gone to sleep, but forever. So, we also need to see Marx's social world. How were conditions during his time? Marx was born in Terrier, one of the oldest cities in Germany. And uh, uh, during his time, serfdom and feudalism had officially ended, right? But still, it took some time for it to actually come into practice. So this is one of the reasons why the Industrial Revolution was slow in France, right? And uh, also, you know, G Germany lacked transportation infrastructure, you know, which ne is needed for markets. You know, it had high uh, tariffs and protectionism, right? So all this we'll see in our world history course. So Germ the point is, German economy was still largely agrarian and its people had suffered through famines. Secondly, the enlightenment was also different in Germany than what we had seen earlier in our video you know, uh, on the British and French enlightenment. If you had to say, when did enlightenment start? Right? We could say that it started with the works of Thomas Hobbes and John Locke right who is uh, considered as the father of liberalism right even france had its own uh, uh, figures such as voltaire or montesquieu which we saw you know, influenced the kind and also uh, it published works such as the encyclopedia the first encyclopedia came into being at that time which had a collection of all the enlightenment thought so generally the french and british enlightenment argued for the supremacy of human reason in the search for truth and this search is to be based on empiricism that is observation right well the german enlightenment is a bit different and uh, it can be traced from the work of levinitz which you would have seen in maths right so the point to notice is that german enlightenment had more of metaphysics rather than pure empiricism right by uh, metaphysics you mean something which is uh, meta you know meta means after which comes after or alongside physics right so that means things which uh, 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 can't be seen are not physical right so that means what is the meaning of life you know this kind of questions so this kind of preoccupation was found in the general, uh, German Enlightenment, right? Through, uh, we could see this in one of the most famous 
thinkers of the German Enlightenment, which was Immanuel Kant. Right? We saw how Kant was preoccupied with the search for pure reason. Right? And uh, he also, uh, we'll see later, he was also, he also thought about human consciousness and uh, uh, you know, his idealism thing in itself and all that. So the point to take is that Marxist theory was also influenced by German enlightenment. That is, they, uh, his works on human nature, on consciousness, on species being, right? So this kind of things come from the metaphysical bent of the German enlightenment. So our next video is going to be an important one in which we will uh, see Marx's intellectual world that is the people who influenced the thinking of Marx. In particular we will see two people. First is Hegel, one of the guys in the general uh, German enlightenment and second is Feuerbach. Right? And if you can understand what these two guys said then uh, understanding marks would be comparatively you know uh, much easier so see you next time